Hi, I'm Matt Brunig and I'm here with Cool Tools today to, to give you some techniques. Um, a common asked question is how to size a ring when I already have a stone set in place. I'm going to give you the techniques to both size a ring up and size a ring down and the technique to protect your stone from being scorched. So with all soldering projects, it's a good idea to protect yourself either using a mask or a fume extractor. So a common asked question is how to size a ring. Uh, both of these rings already have the stone set in place, so you can't uh, put heat from the torch on, on either of these. It would, it would fracture the stones. So what I'm going to show you to do is, is how to size a ring down. This ring is a little bit large, and then cut the material from this one and put it into this one to size this one up. So we're going to be making a, a ring size larger and a ring size smaller. One size for a ring is 2.5 millimeters. Fortunately, on the side of most mandrels, there is a little gauge telling you how, ma how many sizes you have. So I can put my dividers right on here between any of the lines, and that's gonna be approximately 2.5 millimeters, one size. This is the larger of the two rings, so we're gonna size it down. So I'm gonna make A line where I'm going to make my cut. I'm using the thicker saw blade, four out saw blade. And I've scored it right along the lines that I made with the divider. sanding best to clean up the seam where we're going to make a solder. We're going to press the ring in and create good tension on the seam. What I'm doing is I'm pushing the shank, the bottom of that ring, a little, little further past, bringing it back to where it snaps right into place. Both pieces are pressing firmly against one another. I'm going to use my half round pliers to line things up. We're going to save this little piece of material right there so that we can use it on the other ring to size it up. Now this is an ordinary soda can that I cut off the bottom. And what I'm making here is called a cool cup. What it does is it protects your stone from the heat of the torch. So this is normal water in this baby food jar. And we submerge our stone down in the water. Now when you're sizing a ring, you want to use a higher melting temperature solder. So I'm using the standard hard solder, starting with a pretty fluffy flame. Adjust to your liking. What I do is I take the pick and I dip it down in the boric acid and alcohol. And now as I bring it to the, the piece, I'm going to ignite it right as I, right as I reach the shank, the bottom of the ring. Make sure that your pick is ignited or it is not ignited when you put it back into the boric acid and alcohol. Leave that on the pick for now and get some flux. Now you can see that the water is starting to heat up. That's just because of the heat that's transferring downward. You'll see that I'm adjusting the flame to make it a little bit hotter as it heats up. You have to use 
a little bit more fuel and a little bit more oxygen in this process because the silver, you can tell that that was pretty hot. The silver, it takes more time to heat up because it's submerged down in the water. That looks like a pretty good seam. And now we're gonna move on to this ring, which we're gonna use the other piece of material, the 2.5 millimeter piece of material that we cut out of this ring. We're, we're only going to make one saw cut this time so we don't have to use our dividers. going to expand the ring a little bit take a closer look at our piece of material and as the ring is expanded here on the mandrel I'm taking the piece of silver and pressing it right down into there now the tension of the two rings is already there you don't have to create a tension to hold the piece in place. So you want to try and keep the ring well centered so that the area that you're going to be soldering is directly above the stone and above the water. If you have the ring turned too far one way or the other, you're going to find that you're going to have difficulty getting the solder to flow into, into the seam that you want to. If it's rolled too far this way, the water is going to act like a seek, heat sink and won't allow the solder to go into there where the opposite side may flow. If that happens, stop, back out, and then re-solder your second seam. We're hopefully gonna get lucky and get both of them on the first try. So in this case, we're gonna be cutting two pieces of solder. Both pieces of solder are lined up right over the seam. And there it went. Now as far as cleanup goes, I like to use a half round file to clean up the excess material, especially on this one that we sized up. There's a little bit, a bigger chunk of metal there on the bottom. So I'm gonna clean out the inside first. And tap lightly on the bottom of the ring making sure that it's true and round. I like to use the saw to, to make a separation line between the two bands at the bottom. So I just score a line down there. Same with the one that we size down. And I like to use a half round file and clean up that groove, that little valley between the two rings. sanding this to clean up a little bit more. So for the inside of the ring, I like to use one of these split mandrels 
It's just a uh, cylinder type of a piece with a cut right down the middle and you can put different grits of, of sandpaper right on there. Um, this is a 280 sand grit. And so what I do is I, is I fold the end of the bit of sandpaper like so and then put it right into that slot. And then as you, as you rotate the tool, it just wants to make a little drum. I use my thumb as a guide. Um, you do, do want to be careful unless you have a big callus on your thumb, not to be too aggressive doing that because you can uh, give yourself a little sanding burn. So what's the, what this is doing is cleaning up the, the edge of the seam where we soldered here. Just making it look a little bit nicer. You can continue this process with a, with a lighter grit sandpaper to make it shinier and shinier. And you can even use it a little bit on the outside. You can use a sanding stick. This is the 1200 grit paper. I'm just following the contour of the ring, following up the 3M cloth, which is nearly at a high polish. And now you have successfully sized one ring up and one ring down.